Today, we're tackling the notorious red spider mites, but with a twist. Whether you're dealing with an infestation in your greenhouse or on your indoor plants, we've got you covered. We'll discuss how to spot them, how to control them, and the differences in approach between indoor environments and greenhouses. First, what exactly are red spider mites? Well, they're tiny arachnids, Tetranicus urticae, and they are related to spiders and ticks, and they can do serious damage to your plants by feeding on plant cells. When mites pierce the leaves and suck out the contents, it leaves behind a speckled yellow patches and in severe cases, the leaves can dry up and drop off. They're especially problematic in hot, dry conditions, making them common in greenhouses during summer or heated indoor spaces. Because they're so small, barely half a millimetre, you often don't notice them until their numbers grow. One early sign of a spider mite problem is the fine webbing they leave behind on leaves, especially on the undersides. If you spot this webbing, it's time to act fast. Let's start with the greenhouse scenario, which is a prime breeding ground for red spider mites. In a greenhouse, conditions are typically warm and dry, the perfect environment for these mites to thrive. They spread quickly, and if left unchecked, they can damage entire crops. Here are some practical ways to control and prevent spider mite infestations in your greenhouse. In a greenhouse, climate control is key. Spider mites thrive in hot, dry environments so controlling temperature and humidity is essential. Keeping humidity levels up to around 60% or higher makes life difficult for spider mites. You can do this by misting plants regularly, using a humidifier to increase moisture in the air and ensuring good air circulation with fans. Regular inspections are a must Check both the tops and undersides of leaves frequently and pay close attention to any early signs of infestation like yellowing leaves or that telltale webbing. Introducing beneficial predators is one of the most effective ways to manage spider mites in a greenhouse. Since greenhouses are enclosed spaces, releasing natural enemies of spider mites can work wonders. Phytoceolus persimilis are predatory mites and are highly effective at reducing spider mite populations. They thrive in similar conditions, making them an ideal solution for greenhouses. Releasing them early in the infestation can help control the mite population quickly. Amblyseus californicus, another great predator. These mites are more tolerant of varying humidity levels and can even survive on pollen when spider mites are scarce. This makes them a good long-term solution, especially in greenhouses with changing conditions. Ladybugs or ladybirds and lacewings are general predators and they're great for keeping a wide range of pests in check, including spider mites. Releasing these insects in your greenhouses provides an eco-friendly way to manage pest problems without using chemicals. 
Remember to release predators early and in sufficient quantities. Predator mites need time to establish themselves before the spider mite population gets too large. Creating barriers such as fine mesh screens can help reduce the chances of spider mites entering your greenhouse in the first place. Regularly cleaning the greenhouse, removing any plant debris and disinfecting equipment can also reduce the chances of infestation. If you spot spider mites, you can also remove and isolate affected plants to prevent the spread. Some greenhouse owners opt for a quarantine zone to deal with infected plants. Now let's talk about when you find spider mites on your indoor plants. Indoor environments pose unique challenges, especially since house plants often don't get the benefits of natural predators. But don't worry, there are effective solutions to keep your plants healthy. For indoor plants, keeping an eye on them is crucial as spider mites can go unnoticed for a while. Regularly inspecting the tops and undersides of the leaves will help you catch the infestations early. One of the simplest methods to control spider mites on houseplants is by physically removing them. Rinse your plants. Take your plants to the sink or shower and give them a thorough rinse focusing on the undersides of the leaves. The strong spray of water dislodges the mites and you can do this every few days until the infestation is under control. Wipe the leaves. For smaller plants, you can also use a damp cloth to wipe down the leaves and remove mites. Be sure to be gentle so as not to damage delicate plants. Spider mites love dry conditions, which means many indoor plants, especially those near heaters or in centrally heated homes, are at risk during colder months. Increasing humidity is one way to combat this. Misting your plants. Regular misting helps increase moisture on the leaves and creates a less hospitable environment for spider mites. Use a humidifier. If you have a collection of houseplants, place a humidifier nearby and this will boost overall humidity, making it harder for mites to thrive. You can also group plants together to create a micro-humid environment, which further helps in preventing spider mites from taking hold. Biological control indoors is a bit more challenging than in a greenhouse, but it's still possible. While introducing large quantities of predatory mites not be practical in a, a small indoor space, there are still some natural solutions you can try. Amblyseus californicus. These mites work well indoors because they can survive on pollen when spider mites aren't available. They're small enough that you can introduce a few into your indoor environment without disrupting the natural balance too much. Also, ladybugs. But carefully. While ladybugs or ladybirds can also be released indoors, they may not stay in one place for long. If you do decide to use them, release them in a controlled space like a conservatory or sunroom and this might yield better results. When it comes to indoor plants, prevention is your best weapon. Keep your plants healthy by watering them properly and maintaining their preferred environment. Avoid placing plants in areas where conditions can become too dry, such as near heaters or radiators. If you discover mites on one plant, isolate it from the rest to prevent the infestation from spreading. 
You can even create a mini quarantine zone to monitor and treat the affected plant separately. But whether you're in a greenhouse or indoors, once you've dealt with a spider mite infestation, it's important to stay vigilant. Keep inspecting your plants regularly, maintain humidity levels and consider using biological controls as a preventative measure, particularly in the greenhouse. Indoors, keeping your plants well watered and ensuring they're not in overly dry conditions will reduce the likelihood of mites returning. Quarantining new plants before introducing them can also prevent spider mites from hitting a ride into your home. Well, that's about it for today. And um, red spider mites, they may be small, but with the right strategies for your specific environment, you can keep them under control and protect your beloved plants from harm. Whether you're facing them in a greenhouse or indoors, early detection and a combination of preventative measures will help you stay ahead of these tiny invaders. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Local Gardener and be sure to subscribe for more tips on keeping your garden and indoor plants healthy. Goodbye.